Hi guys, and welcome to this evening's webinar. I just want to give you a few last minute tips on how you are going to max your SPL success. In terms of what we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at just very briefly, it, why might you want to listen to me? What is SPL all about? What's the format? Well, I'll go through that quite quickly. Why SPL is so different to others? how it's marked, which I think will be quite relevant to you if you're taking it for the first time. It is a different exam to other exams. We'll talk about why people fail it and maybe how you can avoid that happening and what you need to do to maximize your efficiency in the exam. So that's what we're going to look at in terms of um, what qualifies me to talk to you? The reason I say this is there's an awful lot of false prophets on Facebook and stuff like that. All I'd say is I run a, um, a, a, a an SBL ACCA course, which is platinum approved with FME online. And that's the highest level of approval you can get. Um, I've been uh, talking about SBL and its previous incumbents for over 25 years. In the UK, I've been awarded the uh, PQ Lecturer of the Year and have been runner-up twice. And if you go on to the ACCA website, YouTube channel, Student Accountant, you'll see lots of content which the ACCA have asked me to produce. So hopefully that gives you some confidence other than someone who's just got a Facebook account. Uh, best resources to refer to if you don't want to go in a course is the ACCA Study Hub. Please don't listen to anyone else. OK, be very careful of those experts online. I have reviewed a lot of what they do and a lot of it is plain wrong. And just if you don't believe me, put their name into the ACCA website. See if you get anything from it. Put my name in, put Tom Clendon's name in. You'll see there's a lot more credibility from that. So remember about SBL being a different exam. This is what the examining team say. It's an integrated exam, meaning it's linking a scenario to some questions and contextualizing you as a strategic leader. You're in the workplace. It's practical, involves role play, and you need to have confidence to demonstrate how you would behave in the workplace. It's not technical. It's an applied exam. OK, you can't learn loads of books to pass it like you can for tax and financial accounting papers. And you need to develop confidence in expressing an opinion. They are the key things that you need to be good at. OK, so the format and style very, very quickly. You should know this if the exam is only three weeks to go. It was updated recently to a three minute 15. There's 80 technical marks, 20 professional marks. You only need 50 to pass. You get pre-seen information next Tuesday. You must digest that. I have a video on the ACCA YouTube channel, how to deal with the pre-seen information. Please review that. I also have a video uh, just relaunched uh, today, which is about the examiner report from June 2024. Have a look at that. We had 1,500 people on it earlier. So if you haven't seen it, those 1,500 people have got an advantage over you. You're only going to get three tasks and you need to show a combination of technical and professional skills. Remember that it is different to other papers. It's the rationale behind it. Yeah, you have to apply things, not regurgitate. You have to think how you would behave in the workplace. You have to show professionalism. And in terms of what it covers, make sure you go on to the uh, study hub and understand how and what you need to know. Okay. Um, I've just got a question saying, uh, what theories do we need to learn? Well, to be honest, in terms of theories to learn, you don't need to learn any theories. You need to you need to understand the theories so you can apply them in the context of the question. And it's not regurgitation of the theory. It's using the theory to help you interpret what's going on in a particular situation. So that would be my advice on on theories. Please don't learn them. Don't learn the book. Um, yeah. Let's look at how it's marked then. In terms of how SBL is marked, I'm going to go through what goes on, what the marking principles are, and what professionalism and professional skills marks are. So if we think of the examiner as the marking session lead, because there are 
four exams a year now. Uh, the same examiner doesn't do every exam, but the examiner or marking session lead has a number of lieutenants who manage teams of markers. Um, the examiner or marking session lead is kind of accountable to the qualifications technical advisor. So that's how it works. And when the uh, exam is has been sat, the examining uh, lead and maybe some of their senior lieutenants will get together and draft a marking guide. They'll already have had a marking guide, but on reading the scripts where sometimes different answers come up, they will update and adjust that marking guide. And then they will also create to help the markers learn how to mark the paper, practice and standardization scripts. What then happens is the markers are given training and they are given standardization scripts to see where and where not marks would be awarded. And then they are um, asked to uh, go through these scripts until they are shown to get an exam answer to the standard which the ACCA wants them to get. So um, once that has happened, they're allowed to start marking, but the evaluation of marker standard doesn't stop there because every few scripts, there will be a script that is placed amongst the student scripts that's already been marked. This is known as a seeding script. And if the marker keeps getting right up to what the examiner team expects on the seeding script, then the ACCA know that that marker is doing a good job. If they don't, they will be stopped from marking and the team leaders of the marking teams will have a conversation with the marker to try to get them back to the standard they need to be. So um, that's what happens. I've got a question saying, do markers mark all questions? Very good question. They used to, but they don't do any more. Um, now markers will just answer one question of the three tasks and they will Sorry, they'll only mark one question of the three tasks and they'll do that maybe a thousand times. So they become very, very experts, uh, you know, have a lot of expertise in that particular question. Yeah, they know everything there is on it. So beware of that. So what are the principles of marking? Well, unlike tax and some of the mathematical subjects, um, there isn't one answer. Suggested answers are examples of strong answers and credit on SPL can be given for any relevant answer. No negative marking. Uh, in the ACCA uh, webinar I did today, someone was asking a question of, do you get marked for poor grammar? No, you don't. But you should you know, express yourself uh, in a professional manner like you would be expected to do in the workplace. Um, so, yeah, no marks for spelling or grammar. Um, you normally get up to two marks for a point. Yep. But you don't get two marks for a point. You have to earn them. Yep. That would be what you would need to do. You would also... Um, you know, be operating at a fairly high intellectual level, but it's all about contextualizing your answer to the scenario. If you want to know intellectual levels, don't worry too much about it, but the level at which SBL is evaluated from a technical marking perspective is evaluating and synthesizing, not understanding, applying or analyzing. It's evaluating and synthesizing. So what that means is you must develop new insights, new ideas from the knowledge that is given in tasks in the pre-scene. Um, you need to um, basically, you know, evaluate the complex information and use argument and infer from the information and make judgments. That's what you need to do. Um, in terms of what makes people fail SBL, well, to be honest, people fail SBL because of these four reasons. Poor time management, answer the question they want rather than the one that's asked. They don't have a good command of business English and they completely ignore the professional skills marks. So let's deal with each of those. In terms of using your time, again, if you go on the ACCA website, I have a video on timing. It's on my YouTube channel as well. If you think about an exam is three hours and 15 minutes, you need to have a strict budget during that time. So three hour and 15 minutes is 195. 
let's say approximately 30, 35 minutes reading, that leaves you with 160. We divide that 160 by 80. Yep. And that would give you two minutes per mark. Okay. So that's, but you just have to practice mocks on the CBE platform to see whether you can read it in 30, 35 minutes. Got a question about professional skills marks. Why am I not including them? I'm not including them because they take no time to acquire. They are awarded for how you structure your answer. Yep. So you divide by 80. Okay. That's what we need to do. You need to be really strict. And what you must do is treat it like a project management exercise. And you write down the start and finish for each task section. And if you go over time, you need to leave. Look at my video on timing and see how it can be really easy to ruin your exam because of poor timing. OK, so how do we deal with all of that information? Well, you need to get used to it. Yeah, break it down. It's a bit like how do I eat an elephant one bite at a time? Help yourself by being interactive, by labeling exhibits and reference them. Highlight keywords. Try to picture it. You know, what's going on? Make it real in real life. What's the story telling here? That's what you need to do rather than see it as a kind of, you know, abstract, generic bit of information. What else? Well, you need to also think about the question that's being asked and think about what is um, actually being asked and maybe copy and paste the question into your word processing area. Again, if you haven't been practicing on the CBE platform, copying and pasting into the word processing area is not the same as it is in Word. So practice it on the uh, study hub. What are the key words? What's the format? What's the verb? Rule of and if it exists. So sometimes people miss the second part, you know, if they don't understand the rule of and. So here's a question. What are the benefits and drawbacks, future aims and objectives? People miss that out. So you make sure you see the rule of and. The marking guide, again, look at the um, webinar I did with the ACCA today. You'll find it on the ACCA website. But, you know, I look at every question with a... Um, a kind of mindset of how many marks I can get out of it. So this question is asking about the objectives of a quoted company are likely to conflict with those of the shareholders. So are the objectives of the directors? So what are the objectives of the uh, directors? Probably about four. Shareholders, about four. Where's the conflict? About four. Well, what, what, how many is it? Well, it's a maximum of 10. Um, you probably could get up to 12, but a maximum of 10, you need five to pass. Remember that, yeah? So that's how I do it. Make the job of the market easy. Leave space between points to differentiate them. Leave gaps. Use subheadings. Have a good, strong opening statement to put across that you know what you're talking about. And in terms of white space, well, a lot of students might want to, you know, save a bit of paper. Well, it's obviously a computer exam, so you don't save paper anymore. But it's quite hard to work out where a point starts and ends when presented like this. If it's presented like this, it's really easy. So it would be even better if we used subheadings. So please present it that way. OK. Um, the examining team basically say this. Sitting a mock in time without reference to study is the single most important element in preparing for an exam. Well, I have to say, I, I run a, a course where I give my students eight homeworks and three mocks. And even some of them, despite me getting it marked by ACCA markers, they don't do all of the three mocks I provide. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, why wouldn't you do that? It's, you've paid for it. It's there to make you improve. Please don't be afraid of mocks. It's about getting 50 on the exam day or more. You probably won't do so well before that, but you'll learn from it. It will give you understanding of timing. It will give you understanding of technique, understanding through the marking and feedback where you need to improve and where you're doing well. So please do a mock exam. Yeah, really, really important. OK, um, if you're not familiar with the CBE, you're in big trouble. So please make yourself familiar. Go on the CBE website. The ACCA education team do loads of stuff to help you. OK. What else do you need to maximize your efficiency in the exam then? 
Well, I would suggest that you have a look at maybe one of my podcasts where I ask, why are you doing it? If you haven't got a reason, well, it's going to be tough. Yeah. I also have an article in the ACCA student accountant magazine on it. Why are you doing it? Um, have a look on my YouTube channel, listen to my podcast, find out your why. The other key tip, if you have not done it, is get on the CBE platform and do a mock. Yep. Please, please do that. Because why? Well, would you learn to swim by reading a book? Would you learn to drive by reading a book? I'd ask the question, why do football teams play friendlies before a big tournament? They do it to understand where they go wrong. Yet you do not read books to learn to swim and practice your driving test. You practice driving, you practice swimming. If you don't practice doing a mock, you're not going to be properly prepared for the exam. I'm telling you now, you're not going to be properly prepared for the exam. Please, please take my advice. Um, I give, well, I say I give three mocks. I don't just give them a mock. I mark it and I get massive amounts of feedback on what my students need to improve on and what they're really good at. So keep this, get rid of this. Yeah, I do it in a mock day. I had a question before on what a mock day is. So I've included a slide on a mock day. I use an ACCA mock using the pre-scene. So once the pre-scene comes out, I spend um, pretty much, you know, um, 72 hours writing a mock, writing a debrief video, debriefing the ACCA markers. Yeah, you will not have seen it and it's linked to the pre-scene. So you'll have to really digest the pre-scene. I'll set it in a time window on the ACCA CBE platform, but I will allow you to start it in maybe a two-day flexible window. But that's what you will do. Uh, what else? I get SBL markers to market, but they don't just market. They give comprehensive feedback on where you did well, and where you need to improve. I give a full video debrief of how you could have approached it. But equally, if you'd gone that way and you'd done this, that would be okay. If you'd gone that way and done this, that would be okay. To give you confidence that the answer to an SPL question isn't just the answer that you might get at the end. Really important to understand that because that's not the same on other professional exams. If you've got any questions about what you're worried about regarding the mock, you get WhatsApp support right until the day of the exam. Yeah. What else? I give you links to useful videos. I throw in some mind maps. I throw in some articles to help you do the best you can in the exam. So up to you. But do you want to spend another three months maybe realizing I should have done a mock? Or do you want to take my advice based on the fact that I've taught students for 25 years? I've recorded lots of stuff for the ACCA. And this is how you're going to pass it. I'll leave it to you to decide. Yeah, but that's what you should be thinking of doing. If you did want to do or if you do want to do a mock, how do you sign up? There's a link to it. Go on the FME Learn Online website and you can sign up there. But I give all my students pass assurance on my full course who do the mocks and the homework. And the reason I do that is because they all pass. If they do the mocks and the homework, they all pass. Yeah, some of them might have a bad day, but literally 97% of them pass who do the mocks and the homeworks. The ones that oh, are too busy or can't do it or find every excuse in the book, they unfortunately don't always pass. Yeah, so please do at least one mock if you haven't done so already. And then just to conclude, what do we need to do in the next few weeks? We need to have a clear program of living. Yep. When you work, when you play, when you sleep, when you study. Really important. I said a bit more about this on the ACCA video today. Keep your brain hydrated and so on. Um, give your body a chance to digest by breaking things into manageable chunks. If you get stressed, learn how mindfulness can help deal with stress on the exam day. And I think exercise and diet is also something you should be looking at. Okay. If you need to contact me, well, you've got my email, you've got my WhatsApp, um, please do so. Okay. And don't forget, you are going to be a qualified accountant very soon. If you put a bit of effort in, in the next few weeks, that is all you need to do. So please, 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 please 
take my advice and um, I wish you all the very best. Thanks for listening and any questions, WhatsApp me and do a mock if you want to pass the exam for sure. All the very best. Cheers.